Ni hao, Australia, and welcome to the wrap-up of the 15th IAAF World Athletics Championships. All eyes are centred at the moment over there in Peking, otherwise known as Beijing, for the IAAF World Championships. Yes, it's the World Championships of Athletics, Mossy. It's important to point that out because it's been confused this week for the IAAF, or the FINA World Championships of swimming and diving. And let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Regardez cette image. Le passage de la rivière. La tête la première dans la rivière. Et ça arrive, ça arrive. Heureusement, c'est sans conséquence et ça peut être plus dangereux, plus grave, malheureusement, l'athlétisme. Yeah, so what about that, Mossy? Uh, a little bit uh, disappointed. The Russian judges scored that harshly uh, for uh, Rolanda Bell, the Panamanian that did uh, have a little dip into the creek or the water jump, as it's known. Um, but now look at this. Look at these photos that we see here. This is amazing. Um, she, look, we should point out she got up, she dusted herself off, uh, grabbed a towel, dried herself off a little bit and finished the race. Uh, and that's very, very impressive. When you've taken a headfirst tumble into the water trap, quite spectacular like that. Uh, and you can back it up. I don't think she quite won her heat, but she certainly finished and uh, didn't disgrace herself at all. Robbo, we couldn't make it, so what do we do? No, well, mate, we couldn't get over there this time, but we've sent a VIP uh, jumpy. He's over there, and look at how much of a great time he's having. He's really settled in. It's his first visit to the bird's nest, but uh, soaking it up and getting right amongst it. And uh, a little bit envious, I've got to say, Mossy, but he's doing a great job over there, keeping the Aussie tilt, uh, keeping them happy, keeping them up vibe and interested. Um, the opening ceremony, mate. Yes, well, it's important. We're at the halfway mark of the uh, World Champs now. Let's go back and see where it did start. In the bird's nest, Mossy, it's so famous there, the 2008 Olympic Games. We saw it. Uh, it was amazing. And what they did inside the bird's nest the other night was amazing as well. They rehashed the old song, Beijing welcomes you, and Jackie Chan himself sung all three verses of it. Let's have a look at it. So there you go, that was the video from the original campaign, uh, 2008, Beijing welcomes you, and Mossy, uh, look, sharing a breath and breaking new records. Who could script that any better? What a great way and a great tone to set for the 15th IAAF World Championship. It's fantastic to see Jackie Chan really bouncing back from that horrible performance in the remake of The Karate Kid. Now let's uh, jump into the women's 10,000 metres. Wasn't that a fantastic event? Well, it was. There was, a, there was, a, it was an event within an event, this one, Mossy. There was actually two going on. You'll see here uh, the 9,999 metres. Well, that had an entirely different result set to the 10,000 metres. Molly Huddle, the American... Uh, uh, she's a national champion, national uh, gun, 10,000 metres runner. Here she is, doing the arms up. And uh, on the inside, a girl by the name of Emily Infield, on the infield side, came up and, and bagged that bronze medal and actually got there for the 10,000 metre bronze. Uh, you can see here, disappointment on Huddle's face, and it's fair to say Huddle was indeed in a muddle. And I must say, I don't think she'll ever do that again. Now, one of the highlights for me across the sporting landscape is... I guess the genetic superiority of uh, the gingers out there, and in particular, athletics of these big championships, it's made for us because all the finals are at night. And we've <laughs> seen uh, so far the big jumpers. We've seen Greg Rutherford, uh, the English champion. He's now got the Grand Slam Robo. He does. And we've also got uh, Shawnee Barber, the young Canadian from uh, Toronto, who's uh, got himself a gold medal in the pole vault, taking on this rich tradition in uh, pole vault from, of course, Australia's Steve Hooker. Look, uh, gingers have been jumping well for many, many decades and centuries, Mossy, and it's just coming back to the fore. And Greg Rutherford, you will not find a better looking ginger than, uh, than him. And as you said, he got the Grand Slam, European gold, Commonwealth Games gold, Olympic gold, and now World Champs gold. Very special. And mate, there's hope for you yet. Uh, you might consider taking up the jumps. He's never won the KB Games though, has he? has not that's on his list now i'll tell you what it's really hard to uh find some currency over there in uh beijing and i know that uh, one of the guys in the hammer won a gold medal and he, he found himself <laughs> a camp home home and uh, it was a cheap one for him yes well pavel fajdek uh defended his hammer throw title he's a colorful pole he's a big unit and uh mate as you do when you win the hammer gold medal at the world champs you go out on the piss and you get stark raving drunk and uh look what happened was Apparently, he's, re he's had this story retold to him. He was getting it out of the cab, realised he didn't have uh, any currency Absolutely on him. Absolutely hammered. All he had was this thing around his neck, and he said, look, do you take these? 
and the cabbie uh, obliged and said, uh, yes, certainly, sir, uh, happy to take that. And uh, what ended up happening was poor old Pavel woke up in the morning, didn't know where he was. Uh, he was, I think, I think he uh, was barely wearing a stitch and he didn't have his gold medal around his neck and he was a bit concerned, called the Beijing authorities. They're still hunting for it uh, and he's, he's a bit uh, embarrassed on social media. He's been trying to defend himself. But anyway, that's what you get uh, when you get a little bit loose as a hammer thrower. It's the halfway mark and I can tell you, well, we've got one silver already. We're doing absolutely fantastically. And uh, that belongs to Fabrice Lapierre. And uh, if you were watching it, well, you would have seen a bit of this stuff going on. He loves to jump with the, the, the neck lace in the mouth, Mossy, but absolutely outstanding. It wasn't, wasn't predicted by a lot of people, but uh, Fab, absolutely uh, sensational work there in the sandpit. And Mossy continues a long tradition of Aussie men doing the business in the sandpit. So let's turn our attention now to the lesser lights of the IAAF World Championships over there in Beijing. Why don't we start with the sprints and the Jamaicans once again. They're proving uh, their, their prowess uh, with their big backsides. Yes, Mossy. Uh, well, little, little known athletes like Usain Bolt and Shelly Ann Fraser-Price. Now, Usain Bolt, all the pressure on the world uh, to take down the drug cheat, Justin Gatlin, and he came out and Gatlin was battling, you'd have to say, in those last 10 metres. He almost fell over and uh, Bolt stayed strong. He had to work hard, but he got there. And a win for the good guys, and the athletics community has celebrated ever since. Uh, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, however, wasn't it? Sorry, just wasn't it such a pity to uh, see Gatlin run out of juice there in that last couple of metres? It was. Uh, he needs to fix up uh, his supply line, you could argue there, Mossy. But Shelly Ann Fraser Price came out with the green hair, with the flowers, the, the sunflowers in the hair as a headband. She was, you know who did it? It was Jumpy. Uh, and a great tribute to Australia. She, he, he just went there. She said, do what you need to do. And he put the Australian colours so on there. Well done, Jumpy. He did the job. And as you said, it got a famous sprint double for the Jamaicans. And there's 200s for the men coming up. That's you saying he's hungry for that as well as the relay. So the Jamaicans aren't finished yet, Mossy. But what about the great Brits? Hey, they've, they've, <laughs> they've got onto it. Uh, Jessica Ennis has gone for the hyphen. She's realised that Shelly Ann Fraser Price do the hyphen. The Jamaicans are all over it. So she's just gone and married someone, just, just some bloke off the street. That's right. She's gone Ennis Hill. Now, it's a repeat of Super Saturday back at the London 2012 Games. Uh, Rutherford, Ennis Hill and Mo Farah, well, they've all come to Beijing and they've all got gold. Again, Mo Farah did it easy in the 10,000. He'll likely double up in the 5,000. Um, and Rutherford in the long jump, Mossy, all class there. Uh, names like Dababa in the 1500 metre masterclass, and names like David Rudisha in the men's 800 metres, a masterclass of a different style. He went out uh, slow, held him back, and then he just tore them up, and no one could keep up with David Rudisha. And Mossy, do you know where his win originated from? A little chat that we had with Jumpy in Melbourne earlier this year. Uh, so thank you for coming out and visiting us. And wow. this is Jumpy, the kangaroo. Thank you and uh, we'd much. love you to take him back to Kenya. Wow, thank you. All right, there you go. Dave Rudisha, have a great rest of the season. All the best in Beijing, where we hope you can, you can go all the way and get that gold medal. Thank you very much. And medal tally update, Mossy, if we just have a look at it now. We're currently sitting a little bit down, 15th at the moment, with zero gold, one silver and zero bronze. But who have we taken account well, of? Well, I, mate, I don't know if we've taken account. I want to know our traditional rivals here in Australia. I want to talk about Kazakhstan. Yes, well, Kazakhstan and Tajikistan, we've got them both covered because Kazakhstan's only got one bronze medal. So if we can keep our nose above Kazakhstan for the rest of the champs, um, I'll be very, very happy. I reckon we can creep our way up and start taking the Poms down as well, who have had a very strong game, as have Canada. Uh, let's see if we can knock a few others off, and I think we will with a pocket full of gold very shortly. Well, that's it, guys. That's the best of the nest. Why don't you enjoy the last few days in the sunshine over there in Beijing?